All right, we are back once again chatting here on the Doom Drop podcast with Shun. We're going to be talking a lot about Flash. He's the talk of the town right now. It's Flashmas. Merry Flashmas, Shun. Merry Flashmas, Shun. How you doing, buddy? I guess it comes twice a year, huh? Like Flash came back <laughs> like six months ago or something like that, and now he's back again? Yeah. Yeah, Christmas in June, I mean... Yeah, it's kind of every six months you got something to look forward to. I'm happy about it. <laughs> All jokes aside, though, he is back. Um, at least playing on the ladder right now. If you guys haven't heard about it, I mean, where where are you? Who are you? Are you actually watching <laughs> this podcast and you're not watching the oh. the replays or following? Yeah, well, just in case. Just in case you aren't up to speed on that, basically, what's happening is Flash is back and. He's moving into a new house specifically for streaming very soon. I think he's actually already moved. I, I, I imagine he's playing already, but I don't know if he's streaming right right yet. But he has been playing a lot on the ladder, playing some pretty good games. Um, yeah, and we're all really excited about it. And he might be back for good. We might be seeing him practicing really hard and streaming over the next like three to 12 months and becoming a monster again. Yeah, so the friend of his who went on a talk show and explained that he was planning to come back said that he is planning to focus on one versus one which yeah i take it to mean that he is uh you know not going to just be streaming and trying to make money from streams uh or you know doing like variety or just messing around you know like like larva or somebody else who's um kind of doing it for the lulls you know like a or, or or a rain type of stream he's actually planning to grind games to potentially go back in the asl so i think it's a very high chance that we'll see him in the asl i don't know about the kcm though what do you think shun yeah uh, i think you'd probably be waiting maybe for another year before you see him in something like kcm i think you might see him in kcm it's just i think you're probably waiting like yeah maybe at, at least 12 months i don't think we'll see him in the next couple of seasons for sure well, I don't know if you guys saw my video about Flash's whole controversy um, with cryptocurrency, but uh, I'll throw a link in the description for that. Unfortunately, KCM did say some things. Did you hear about that, Shun, when, when the controversy happened? Um, well, I imagine that... I don't know exactly what was said, but I can imagine it was related to the, the cryptocurrency scandal thing i imagine that there will be some animosity and maybe a little bit of gatekeeping in what he can and can't access so i'm not sure what kcm stance is on it right now but do you want to clue people on exactly what you said well unfortunately um i i mean it, it's never nice to hear an overreaction especially from someone you really appreciate and and look up to but kcm said that what flash did was worse than savior and let me just no, say that's not true this, that's not true this is not the case because what happened with flash was he got conned by a slippery uh finance guy right this this guy named suit who kind of tricked him into starting up a coin with him and and he and his his buddies you know were gonna invest in that and uh the con man gave them all a contract saying that their investment would be completely secured. You know, there's no chance of them losing any money. And then before the coin went live, uh, you know, those contracts were released to the public. Everyone found out about them and the coin was bought, was, was thrown aside. So there was never any coin. The coin ended before it even began. Nobody got scammed, but, He's worse than savior. It just doesn't quite make sense. So I'm I'm, I'm yeah, a little I mean, sad that he said that. Um, well, let's unpack that a little bit. To yeah. be fair, so there is some scandal there still. Like you could argue that yeah, it's a little bit shady. Like your investment secured, and you're gonna like you know publicize that to your audience and get them to invest in something risky. Blah blah blah. So there's a lot of scandal there in yeah. itself. But there's no way that's anything like the caliber of what savior did at all. No, I mean savior damaged the starcraft community very badly very badly it, it, it jeopardized the integrity of the game as a whole and that's far worse than scamming some fans out of not even not even scamming some fans but potentially some fans losing some money over a shady guy in cryptocurrency right 
yeah not even comparable it's sneaky what they were trying to do you know they're trying to set up a cryptocurrency and yeah they had like kind of a backroom contract um never trust anyone who says that your uh principal on your investment is secure you know it, well, there's zero risk here for you you're just going to make a lot of money that's never risk, the yeah. case yeah yeah anyone that's trying to sell you something like that you should be like really smelling bullshit a mile away yeah. you know what i mean like th those things don't usually exist unless you yourself are part of the rug pull team that's going to be doing the rug pulling yourselves there is no security no, there's there's really no guarantee in any investment and as soon as you hear that you should be running the other way unfortunately that's not what flash did he kind of went in on it he got a bunch of other streamers involved in it as well and it kind of tarnished his spotless until then reputation which he had kind of built up over such a long time you know he's like he was he was the darling really of starcraft he was the the number yeah. one guy and uh, not just because he was so incredibly good, but also because he was so spotless and clean and just, you know, family friendly. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's not like Jake Paul scamming people. It's, it's you know, someone who's got a spotless reputation you think of as someone to look up to. And then, boom, he uh, has some sh sort of shady thing going on. It's more of a slap in the face, I suppose. Right. Yeah. I mean personally I, I think that you can heal from that i think that he can still be part of the scene i don't think that completely ruins him um no even and someone like savior i mean he even he ended up streaming on a freaker and what have you and kind of came back to the scene in a bit more of an underhanded way he was still mm -hmm. kind of relevant despite all of that scandal so how could we gatekeep flash who hasn't really done anything nearly that bad and also still has a lot to offer the scene yeah it's um it would be crazy especially with bisu who is also heavily involved he's been back for years so yeah i was, I was actually going to bring up that later on that there does seem to be a weird bias towards certain players like bisu there's this weird kind of like fandom that players like bisu have where it's like they are the 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 blue-eyed boy that can do no wrong for their fans you know what i mean but there's also a culture in korea where it's like we need to tear down our celebrities right. like we're always trying to find out what they're doing wrong and uh it's a scandal yeah. yeah usually that is the case but mm. there are a few rare exceptions although the exceptions usually do prove the rule but yeah there are a few exceptions like bisu where it does kind of seem like it's weird how he he kind of gets away with things that other players just wouldn't. Well, I think he might have a bit of a, a thicker skin than Flash, potentially, right? He came back to streaming. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he took a lot of shit uh, in the comments and in the in the chat, but he just kind of stuck it out and hung around. His streaming numbers took a massive hit, but they eventually bounced back, and he's doing doing well now. So, it you know, it's not like he came through completely unscathed, but he was able to weather the storm a lot better than flash who just, you know, went c completely dark. And I'm really curious to see how he's going to do on, on stream. I hope he doesn't get completely discouraged by, you know, negative feedback or anything like that. Yeah. Well, this is, this is going to be the problem because he's not used to that. Like he's yeah. used to being widely accepted and loved and what have you. That's right. right? So now, so now to suddenly face this kind of tirade of backlash, I mean, yeah, he, that might be really crippling on his mentality. He might, you know, have a few like rants and tantrums on his stream and like get one guy too much where like someone says something and he obsesses over it too much and he can't let go and he's just mm. locked in on that you know what i mean right. this thing this, this stuff happens I, I hope he can avoid that i hope he can remain engaged with his community but and not get like riled up too much but i mean that's kind of wishful thinking i think you have to wonder even if he doesn't get riled up on the surface you you, you can't help but think it's going to affect him in the long run mentally I'm sure he's going to have some dedicated mods in there to filter out some of that backlash and try to help him out. Um, but I'm yeah. sure that a few will get through and, uh, you know, he might be a little bit put off by that. We'll see how he how it goes, though. You know, 
it's been a while. It has been a while, and there's been plenty of other controversies going around in Korea, I'm sure, uh, that have kind of covered for that. Time is a is a great healer, especially when no one was actually damaged or hurt by the situation. That you know, it tarnished his reputation, but it didn't destroy anybody's you know livelihood or savings or anything like that. So it would be yeah. a, a bit cringed for fans to keep harping on it, even if they hadn't been actually financially injured at all. I mean. Let's let's look at the other side of the coin and sure. try and empathize with how the, they might see things. I mean, from their perspective, I guess a lot of people are frustrated with Flash as well because mm -hmm. they have a bias against him in the sense of I, some people that don't like Flash are frustrated because every ASL he was performing well right. and knocking out their favorite players and what have you, right? So they've had a period of not having Flash in the equation, so they've been able to like let their guy shine more. So the person that you want to support is probably performing way better than usual because Flash wasn't in the picture. So they probably cut, they like that. And now Flash is coming back. Maybe there's also a bit of bias towards uh, not wanting to see like Flash winning everything again. Or like, you know, because some people find that boring. They, they, you know, even just that alone from him as a player, people would have bias against him, I would argue. Yeah. Even if it wasn't a scandal attached to it. And let us know in the comments, guys, what you think. You're, are you guys happy to have Flash back? Are you excited for him to compete in asl again um I, I know that a lot of people were actually like you said should happy that some other players were given a chance to shine because flash is out of the picture but uh, i don't know it feels a little bit um hollow without flash being there you know knowing that the greatest player of all time is not in the picture does it take away yeah. from the victory of uh you know soul key or whatever just knowing that he won in a time when flash wasn't even competing there are a bunch of seasons where he didn't compete as well, so I don't think that's like a big... Uh, I, yeah. I mean, it doesn't take away from my image of Soul Key uh, as being a, an amazing player, but maybe like from their perspective, as someone who is in that scene and who's you know dedicated their life to getting to that highest echelon, if Flash is right. just not allowed to play and he's you know he's supposed to be the best in the world. Yeah, it's it's kind of robbing those players the the chance to to beat him and then and claim that, um, right. at least for that year or that, at least for that season that they really truly are the best. You see these kinds of discussions and thought processes take part in other sports as well. Like if you look at boxing, for example, you're always arguing about, oh, who, which boxer in their prime would beat this boxer in their prime and what have you. And that's kind of what we're talking about here. Right. It's like it does it does. It would be nice if we could see like a exactly how these players would stack up against each other it's kind of weird that flash kind of disappeared from the scene just just dropped off the cliff mm -hmm. after being so dominant for so long it does kind of feel weird to have like that that vacuum have to be filled and maybe the game would look a lot different if he was still a part of it and maybe that could be more exciting or less exciting depending on your perspective and how you feel about things but one thing's for certain i think we'd have a, a more competitive scene yeah it's it's really similar to like an MMA situation with a player that uh you know took something that they shouldn't have as a mistake you know a one off or something and then they get caught for doping and they get kicked out um and then the person who turns out to be the champion is you know feeling a little bit robbed like they didn't have the opportunity to beat the person who is actually yeah. the best in the world right someone else had to step in that's like it's a bit rough for the fans um but then again you know some fans might be happy that that strongest uh, fighter got knocked out or uh yeah it's no yeah. it's a difficult situation man i'm personally really glad that flash is back i think that uh for starcraft as a scene and for the attention on StarCraft, it's amazing. A lot of people are coming back to watch right now. A lot of people are interested to see, you know, what's going to happen with Flash. He's such a big name. He's so well known. It's just amazing for the the visuals of the scene, you know, for the the attractiveness of the scene to have Flash back right now. Yeah, I think so. I mean, 
any everyone making videos about him right now are, are seeing that too because if, if you're talking about flash in your video it's probably getting a lot more views than some of your other videos right i'm sure you yourself can speak mm -hmm. to that like any anything about flash is going to garner attention and that alone should speak volumes to people that he's exciting to watch and it's, and he brings excitement to what the future might hold and even if you don't like flash you could you know be a hate viewer in the sense of wanting to see him fail like wanting to see him show up to the next asl and get knocked out by soul key and then you'll be like ah you got knocked out by soul key flash you know there's, there's, there's feel good vibes for him being back even if you don't like him i would argue yeah there's there's a bit of an ex an extra level of excitement going on right now for this next season of asl if he's going right. to sign up or not. And that's that's always good for the scene as a whole. Just to have that little that little extra bump in viewership and and excitement. It's great. But um I would I would say so. How many games have you seen of Flash so far? Not a lot. Not as much as probably you have cuz I mean you you probably are scouring every single replay you can find of that guy and what have you. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen I've seen I've seen enough to talk a little bit about it though. So one thing he's doing in Terran versus Zerg, you you spoke on that already. He was playing mech a lot, but he's also doing very baseline builds like two racks tech in Terran versus Zerg. So he's getting two barracks um, off an engineering bay, going into factory, and then he's tank pushing. Usually, it's, usually you can tank push in the sense that since you've only gone two racks and your tech times are quick, you can kind of get there. If they rush to fighters, they're going to have consume ready about 10.30, 10 10.45 10 at mm -hmm. the earliest. So that's roughly around the time of the tank push if the mutalisks are doing their job as they should be earlier on. But Flash seems, from my perspective, seems to be building a baseline of, of data and after he's collected hundreds and thousands of games worth of data, using these baseline builds i think he's then gonna start reinventing the meta to his own liking i think the reason why he's playing the way he's playing right now is to kind of feel things out and come up with his own solutions rather than just play the meta builds that other people are doing and looking to their solutions because he wants to first get a read of okay how does the baseline stack up to what they're doing right now mm. and now i'm going to come up with my own theories based on that yeah flash he he appears to play meta style uh in air quotes meta but that's only because he invents a new style and then it becomes meta almost immediately people just glom onto it because he is so well thought out and you know his decision making his uh thought process is so amazing people just realize immediately the genius that's behind it and start to uh copy it and becomes meta so quickly it really seems like he's constantly playing meta, but he's always pushing the envelope. He's always changing uh, what Terran players can do and giving them more options. And it's up to the Zergs and the Protoss to keep like transitioning and following along behind, trying to pick up the pieces, figure out how to deal with the new tech that's coming out of Flash. It's really impressive to watch. And one thing that he's been doing a lot recently is CC first, which kind of fell out of style for Terran players for a long time. CC yeah. first against Zerg. Uh, it, it was in for a, a short period of time, but in the current meta, eight racks was the thing. I didn't see him play eight racks even a single time. It was all about uh, rack, one racks FE and then uh, 14 CC when he thought that his opponent was going to be going 12 hatch. And getting away with that gives him a big advantage. Makes him really, really beastly. Um, we even saw uh, 14 CC into two armory mech play, which was just insane. And yeah, you could just see him pushing the envelope. It's it's awesome, 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 awesome to watch. Yeah, I mean, and that's kind of what um, one of the things I'm excited about because even if he's not able to perform to the same caliber as previously anytime soon, just his creative approach to the game may be enough to upset the meta and the scene overall because his approach to the game will be probably a lot different than other Terrans and pretty much all of those Terrans will be all eyes on Flash because even if Flash isn't performing at his best, he's still going to be coming up with very creative solutions to problems that other Terrans just can't figure out. I mean, it's already happening, right? We saw in KCM, um, I think it was Royal did CC first 
against one of the yeah. Zerg players and followed it up with uh, a five racks or something like that. But um, that's something that just it just hasn't been a thing for so long. And then Flash comes back and he does CC first and now Royal's doing it on in KCM. It's, I don't think it's a coincidence. It's pretty clear that he's already affecting you know, what people are trying and, and the metagame is shifting already. Yeah, I think people will want to swim with the tide rather than struggle against it. And the smart people won't like struggle to adjust. They will just embrace the adjustment and want to dive into it. And that's that's kind of like a a key to life in a way. Like rather than struggling against the currents and tiring yourself out, you could just like sit with the current and let the current carry you. So then you're not exerting any energy if you don't really like you know want to lose any like effort or you can swim with the current and expend energy but gain the momentum of the current with your your own effort so then you're like you know doubling your progress as well while well, flash is used to struggling against the current i suppose playing off meta style all the time you know just making up his own builds as he goes along it's like you said it takes a lot more effort but he doesn't seem to have any lack of effort since he started you know for his entire career he's just been putting in the hours and just grinding out games like crazy it's just so impressive man following his career yeah, for a I very mean, long time and it's just crazy the reason why flash was as good as he was was because anything that you threw at him even if it was something new that hadn't been in like a televised professional game flash had still seen that at least 10 times because he's played so many games and grinded against everyone that he's and and kind of come up with creative stuff for his opponents to do against him himself like mm -hmm. he knows how to play all three races he played random in asl and smashed everyone there was a bit of luck in there as well, obviously, but it doesn't matter if you're playing random and you're 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 trashing pro gamers on stage. That that's pretty impressive. No one else has done that. I'd love to see him go random again. It'd be so fun. I think he'll he'll stick with Terran though for at least the first season though, if he comes back to ASL. I imagine so. I imagine he will not do the random thing for a very long time. I mean, I'm sure he'll play a little bit of Zerg and Protoss on stream and what have you, for sure. But at a, at a competitive level, I don't think he'd, he'd touch that for quite some time. I think the random thing would make a lot of players feel better about him coming back, though, or a lot of fans feel better about him coming back. Like, if he's feeling a lot of pushback, going random, I feel like nobody's going to complain if you're going to play random in the ASL. <laughs> 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 well i agree but i also feel like he would be setting himself up to fail if he mm. didn't like there's no way he'd be successful if he tried to come back and play random it's just too much work like mm. you have to prepare for nine matchups and yeah it's just you can't do that it's too stressful the only reason he could make it work was because he was living and breathing starcraft at that point so much that he didn't even need to practice as terran that much to stay at that level you know what i mean yeah. so he was able to divert a lot of his energy to a lot more matchups so uh, yeah coming back like that he would just get stomped i feel possibly yeah he um might have a pretty hard time making that work but i think everybody would love it maybe next season well, they maybe probably would season. like it yeah, yeah. <laughs> they would definitely like it in terms of what in, the in yeah in terms of just raw entertainment value, I would argue that if he could play random and could play at a reasonable level, everyone would be like doing backflips and would much rather see that because it'd be it creates such interesting dynamics and weird situations that you don't normally see because like obviously they're scouting and you don't even know what flashes races until you actually scout him right. So it can create some very interesting dynamics in those those games. But uh, yeah, I don't think we'll see that at least for a year or two at the very least, maybe even a lot longer than that. The thing that was so funny about Flash playing random was the excitement level at the beginning of the game every single time was hilarious. Like if you watch some of these compilations, um, I think Jinjin put together a video of play players reacting to his race, <laughs> like what he actually got. Because everyone's, you know, yeah. his opponent's Terran, so everyone's like, what's it going to be? Is it going to be TVT? Is it going to be TV? Or you know tvz or tvp and they're you know everyone's tense and wondering what's going to happen and then 
right as the screen lights up, you can see uh, everyone freak out because it's, oh, it's Zerg. He got Zerg, and everyone's freaking out. It's, yeah, I yeah. mean, such a interesting dynamic for a StarCraft game. <laughs> the beginning of the game is so lax for basically every game of StarCraft. You know, we got to fill time. We got to talk about something else as things start to ramp up, but it was just a funny inversion of that having uh, Flash go random and everybody freak out when he got a certain race. <laughs> right, right. No, you're absolutely... <laughs> I, I, I felt that way a lot whenever I was watching those games. I would, I'd be freaking out. And, and but yeah, basically, like, wondering what's it going to be as the countdown's happening. You know, yeah. like you're, you're excited to see what he's going to get. And exactly. when you do see it, you're excited. Yeah, it's got such a good payoff. And just the start of the game was exciting alone. So that's, that's an history observation, so... Yeah, it's uh, an exciting time to be a part of Brood War, man. I'm really enjoying it. You having a good time with Brood War recently? Have you been playing any on on ladder? I haven't actually been playing any ladder. No, no. You... I've been kind of like dipping and diving. Um, I've been, I've been observing a lot. Like I've mm -hmm. been watching StarCraft content and watching games, but I've not been playing a lot recently. I've um been talking with a Chinese uh, content creator who invites Korean pros to play in an online tournament, like a kind of an ultimate battle type deal. Oh, yeah. And it's something that I don't think anybody has access to. I, I'm, I'm sure that almost nobody in the foreign community knows about this or has ever watched it. And I'm I'm trying to get some... Uh, communication going with that guy maybe we can work out some sort of deal to uh, get that onto youtube with an english cast so that people can enjoy that as well because there's there's so many games going on in the background that just nobody knows about that would be, that'd be cool yeah it'll be really fun to to cast that as well yeah that'd be that'd be really exciting to be able to do something like that maybe they can get flash on there <laughs> <laughs> Be I mean, I don't think he would perform too good at the moment. I, w I think he needs like a few months of grinding before we see him start to perform, similar to how we'd expect. Um, maybe a bit longer, six to twelve months until you see like really high level play out of him. You'll, mm. still, you'll still see high level caliber play, but I mean like really good, like with you know six seventy plus percent win rate kind of stuff. Yeah, you're not going to see that for a while, but. I think, yeah, given enough time and practice, um, he might be back up to a similar standard as before. But mm -hmm. I, I do think it's going to take him a good year. And I think that's maybe the focus is just grinding like crazy for a whole year for the ASL qualifiers and see how he performs. And that might give him enough time. Sounds good. I, I would also, I would also like to. I think I've told you this already, this story already, but uh, the viewers, probably most of the viewers, haven't. Like the reason why Flash is so special is like there wasn't a time where he wasn't special. Like, even when the kid was like 14 years old and not even old enough to like play on stage yet, he got, you know, recruited into KT magicians, joined the pro gamer house. And as part of like tradition in the pro gamer house, you play against everyone in the house in a best of three, everyone in the house from the, the B teamer that has to clean the clothes to the team captain at the end, right? Everybody, everyone plays. So, Flash 2 owes everybody, everybody, except Nalra. Nalra, team captain, last to play. Nalra bricking himself. This kid who no one knows about, it's like 14 years old, or barely knows about, and he's just showed up and 2 owed everybody. And he even beats Nalra 2-1. Like, can you imagine, like, the feeling that Flash has had his entire life, even at the age of 14, he was able to walk into a pro gamer house and beat every single body in a best of three like this kid has been like firing on all cylinders from a very young age and also being like an innovator from a young age as well right he's coming up yeah. with new plans like he's not just following along other great terrans and copying their builds he's uh you know switching things up even in tournament play for a long time he was trying to make the 14 cc work against just about everybody and failing and failing and then finally he locked it in he 
dialed in the build and then just started dominating everybody. Um, he is he's he's just got a unique way of playing the game. It's Absolutely. it's always been that way. It goes so deep, guys, that even the return cargo trick that some of you might know about, where you like um, hit the return the C by default on your keyboard, makes like say if you're mining the top mineral patch and if you're spawning on the right hand side. Sometimes when you hit return cargo, it will turn the worst mineral patch into the best mineral patch. Like usually it's like somewhere like 50 minerals a minute. But if you hit that return cargo, just as they get the mineral block in their, their hands, then it does a much faster mineral path movement so that you, you it, it turns from like 50 minerals a minute to like closer to 80 minerals a minute. So it turns it into like the best mineral patch to mine. And no one knew this. And the only way anyone found out about this was because they could hear Flash doing this every single time he was playing at the start of the game. And everyone was thinking, why is Flash hitting his keyboard like that every like 10 seconds or whatever, right? They're thinking like, what's he doing? What's it? No one knew. No one knew this. He was doing this for ages and no one knew about this. And eventually other people figured it out. That's what Flash was doing. That's how Flash had more minerals than me. That's how Flash was like doing his build orders like two, three, four seconds faster. You know what I mean? Like he was even figuring out that stuff on a fundamental level way before anyone else. Flash time traveler confirmed, man. How the hell did he know that before everybody else? I feel like I thought that that was actually Zerg players that figured that out. I no. thought I thought that was from uh, players like trying to optimize their builds with just you know s seven, eight, nine drones on the minerals. You well, have to be so careful with yeah, how Zerg much you're mining. Zerg players figured out other things faster because there are certain things that are unique to Zerg mm. because the hatchery is actually the hitbox of a hive before you make it into a hive. So the structure of the building is far different than the, the nexus and the command center. So, for example, the drones will bounce off the corners of your hatchery in a different way than they will for a nexus slightly. Mm. Luckily, probes are much more nimble than drones and SCVs, so probes have an easier time of being mineral optimized. But with Zerg, you can do a few special things based on that weird mineral power thing, and you can really optimize them. Usually, as Zerg, like you say, you got far fewer workers, so there was more incentive to try and optimize. But the actual fundamentals were discovered by players like Flash and the the more manual boosting. But Zerg players were better at optimizing the just where you place your drones to get them to bounce in certain ways and what have you. Hmm. I guess that makes sense. That's very interesting. The history of optimization someone needs to make a youtube video about that like optimization in bird war and like how people have evolved from the or early days of brood war when you know the mineral patches were even farther away from the cc or whatever and <laughs> all the minerals yeah. were all spread out and you know, none of the pathing was any good and they, you know, eventually figured out, oh, if we put the minerals like right next to, or, you know, all right next to each other in a long line, it's a lot better. And then people started to figure out slowly, but surely like, oh, this patch is much better than that patch. And, oh, if you put it yeah. on this edge of that patch, it does better. <laughs> or this one uh, does better if you, you know, return cargo. Th th this is a long history of evolution. Uh, just at that very basic stage of uh, the first like two minutes of the match when you're you know, first mining and then later on you're not really thinking about it nearly as much because you're too busy with everything else but uh, it's so important that that history of optimization should be a, a video in itself absolutely um, and, and flat it's funny because flash he's known for all these kind of weird tricks and gimmicks over the years for things he's figured out that people just didn't even consider before like way back in the day on a map called monty hall it was a semi-island map with three lanes that had mineral walls um at both ends of the lane so you had to like hop over one mineral wall and then hop over another mineral wall just to scout your opponent right very tricky stuff so usually people are not like rushing in these games because the semi-island maps have two mineral walls to worry about and you also have to guess uh, which lane they might be rushing from so usually it's better to play safer on one base and you know tech slowly and expand slowly and do everything a little bit more slower anyway it's flash top left versus bisu bottom right 
Flash is saying, I'm going to rush anyway. So he hops over his SUVs over the first mineral wall and starts making barracks outside the other mineral wall, still outside of BC's base, still has a mineral wall to go over. And, you're, and everyone's wondering, how is Flash going to rush over the other mineral wall? Because he's building the Marines in, outside of it. He can't move his Marines through the mineral. Everyone's really confused because there's no way these Marines can get in to attack Bisu normally, right? And then Flash starts making the gas at the expansion where the mineral wall is. And everyone's like, what? Why is he taking the gas? And suddenly he starts mining out the mineral wall. And when they come from the mineral wall with the mineral, he puts it into the gas geyser that he just built. So it converts the mineral block into a Vespine gas. So he can keep mining the mineral wall out by changing it back to a gas geyser to read the gas over and over again. And that's how he mines out the mineral wall. And then he kills Bisu with a bio rush. Yeah, if I remember correctly, that game was like one of his debut games uh, yes. on stage. And yes. people were very upset that he rushed Bisu and won. <laughs> and they thought that this guy was, is so gimmicky. Uh, but that is just genius at that level, uh, at that time in Brood War history. That is not a well-known trick, even today. But back then, it was completely unheard of. Yeah, everyone was calling him like a cheesy so-and-so. And I was there just, this guy's a genius. You guys don't even know what you're talking about. You have no idea. This guy's a different kind of wizard. And like from day one of seeing him on stage, I was sold because I just knew that this guy was different. He's so young too back then. Such a little yeah, little a guy. Kid. Yeah. Bisu, even back then, Dude. there was rose colored glasses for that man. The guy has always been the favorite. The only reason he wasn't considered the kid was because of Ty Baby, mm. because um, Baby B Baby was a Terran player that came around a little bit after Flash, and he was even younger. So everyone looked to him like the kid of Starcraft. But really, Flash was the kid of Starcraft. It's just someone younger came around later on that also played Terran, so he kind of got the limelight as being the kid, right? Right. I haven't heard too much about Ty recently. I think he's um maybe he's still practicing for the next asl he did all right right he's pretty good mm -hmm. in this pre previous asl or is he gonna play sc evo or something i saw him play a few games of that yeah maybe maybe um but to be fair though it's like impressive that he's been able to perform at a high level with both starcraft 2 and subbrood wall he's one of the few that can do that well he's got a a great uh vision to look up to right he's got soul key there who's done it in both games yeah like yeah. well if he can do it maybe i can do it too right could be rain a little bit as well like there's a few players like that that have done pretty good in both games yeah soul key just on the top of the world what do you think he thinks about flash coming back <laughs> like, oh well <laughs> there, there goes my streak <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure he's not feeling the the pressure of it just yet he might feel the pressure of it a year down the line when flash is playing like a machine again right mm -hmm. now i'm sure he's not feeling it too much he might be a little bit concerned but i would argue that he'd probably be more excited than concerned this is a chance for him to establish even more of a name for himself because if he does knock out flash in asl or something that's going to be looking even better for him right mm -hmm. yeah that's a good opportunity but i don't know flash is really going to steal the limelight if he ends up on asl just imagine those like group selection stages and stuff yeah it's gonna be yeah. wild yeah, that, that is a reality that Flash will definitely be... Until he performs really badly and, like, yeah, he will definitely steal a lot of the thunder from the other players, at least initially. Well, I'm I'm super excited about it, man. I'm going to be casting more Flash games coming up here pretty soon. I saw another mini-series with him and Jadong. That would be an insane finals to see once again. If Jadon could actually put things together, maybe having flashback will like light the the fire in his belly. Uh seeing that old competition. Um uh, that old um rivalry might you know, might spark him up, make him want to try harder, yeah. practice harder to to you know do better in ASL. Well, I'm hoping even if Flash isn't able to, you know, get that dream run he might also inspire the rest of the scene to try harder right mm. just by his what, what he comes up with in terms of like meta shifting um approaches to the game and and also just being there might might light a fire under some of the 
uh, pro gamers' asses to kick themselves into even higher gear than they already are. A little bit of inspiration for those other players. It's going to be a fun time here. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate. I don't know if it's going to happen for KCM, but we'll be watching out for all kinds of games of Flash on the ladder maybe. and maybe him competing in some of these other tournaments. Hopefully there's some some people who are willing to allow him to compete. I don't think he's been banned from ASL. I never heard about it, uh, him actually getting banned. So I guess it's open uh, I think to if him BC if he allowed to. to play in the yeah. ASL, then Flash should be allowed to play. That's ridiculous if it's not. Yeah, that would be that would be really crazy. Um, I've been uh, cranking out a bunch of games on the ladder recently been doing that 10, that 10 games a day it's uh it's going all right um the the viewership's been getting better and better actually people nice. have been tuning in i think it's a nice title the 10 games a day until we hit a it's uh, yeah pretty catchy good. pretty catchy i think i said to you um during the cast that we did for kcm most recently mm -hmm. that um Try not to get into a situation where you're just grinding out the games for the sake of getting those ten games. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to be cognizant and uh, you know keep thinking, not just just grinding. Right. Um, but it's it's important to get on and and play every day, right? If every day you if don't you play any together, games, yeah. yeah. If every day you don't play games, you get more and more rusty, right? especially starcraft it's one of those games where it's like the game is so janky that if you aren't in touch with it mm. it doesn't respond the way you want it to and even if your brain can kind of think of what you want to do your hands can't make that happen anymore mm. and it's like you need that mechanical fluidity and like intuitiveness driven into you like mm -hmm. as soon as you stop playing for like just do it one two three days it's like you lose touch with it and it's it's like you you it's like taking psychedelics like you only get that sense of tessellation and like connectivity while you're doing it and if you stop doing it and you don't do a, a, a an acid trip or whatever for ages and ages you lose that and you lose that sense and you only can get that back from by participating again. It's not like riding a bike where you you know the balance is just there you you've always got it once you've got it as soon as you uh, step off of brood war step away from brood war when you come back it's like yeah things are just not moving correctly your fingers can't find the keys um the flow is not there it's it's tough so that's the plan is to play every single day um yeah. i'm I, not doing it every single day i've taken a couple of breaks already but trying to hit every day 10 games um and just get into that flow keep practicing and, and slowly grind my way up. I th I feel like I'm st I'm starting to get there with um ZVT. That's my worst matchup by the way. That's the matchup that yeah. I struggle with the most and it ends up losing me the most points. I think I'm on like 40% win rate in ZVT, so it's really bad right now. What do you think's going wrong in ZVT for you? Um I would say my main problem right now is uh, while I'm micring my mutas, I'm having a very hard time setting up bases, getting all the upgrades, uh, and mm -hmm. like, you know, making overlords, making drones, sending the drones to the mineral patches, getting the extra hatcheries, you know, starting the the hive, starting the the upgrade for a lurker, then building the hydras at the right time, and then making the hydras into lurkers right before the marines get to your base <laughs> that's like the hardest part for me yeah i would i would say that is probably the hardest part about zerg versus terran is because you need to set up for a strong mid game mm -hmm. but you also need to apply pressure yeah and that's the hard thing about starcraft is you want to grow but you want to apply pressure while growing yeah. and that's the tricky part because you're task switching rapidly at that stage and uh, yeah unfortunately for zergs that's kind of like the money in zvt if, you, if you're good at that you'll be okay in the mid game and mm -hmm. if you, you don't then the terrans will have free reign and that's where terrans win percentage is the highest is during that mid game phase so yeah i think that's where pretty much all zergs are struggling not just you yeah so i'm like i'm doing really well with my mutalist micro i practice it a lot so i'm like flying in 
you know, five, seven, ten SCV kills in the main and natural, and I'm feeling great. I go back to my base, like I start uh, all my, um, uh, uh, you know, my upgrades, and I've got my uh, tech coming, and then he's he's starting to move out. Then I'm microing against yeah. the Marines, you know, and then uh, I'm fighting against the Marines, and then I get back to my base, and I haven't touched my base for you know, yeah. 30 seconds or 45 seconds and now my lurkers are 20 seconds too late and he busts my natural you know it's it's a really annoying problem but it's yeah it's it's tough. Um, the way i combated that was i tried to be as um i tried to do things as sequentially as possible so say for example sometimes less is more so sometimes a good thing to do is to say like bait out a stim with your muters by flying in and then flying out and then for those 10 seconds of waiting for the stim to run out that's when you do your like build an expansion build the upgrades and all whatever mm -hmm. what have you and if and if i can't let's say the the lurker den is on the way or the evo chamber is on the way and it's not finished yet so i can't even make the upgrade yet and i have to go back to micro the muters or hotkey hot that yeah. that building to like four or something so then I can make the upgrade remotely without even having to look back. And that's the only way you can kind of do it while also staying in the flow of harassing the Terran constantly. Yeah. Because Starcraft's an attention-based game, right? Yeah. And the Terran player will also be prioritizing his army control over everything in those situations where they're fighting muters. So you're also diverting his attention away from doing what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. So if you can build those upgrades on time while you're harassing and pressuring him, you're actually in an advantage. But it's usually... The inverse happens. You you get too swept up in harassing the Terran that you don't do your own dotting of I's and crossing of T's. That so then you actually fall behind, even if you have been successful with your micro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it 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 tends to be like okay, I hotkeyed the building and I got the upgrade and I harassed and I built the drones and I built the evolution chamber and I built you know I got all the upgrades going and I got the hive and I got the defiler, but I missed the overlord, so now I can't make lurkers. You know, it's just the there's like one thing that went wrong, and <laughs> you know, there's there's like eleven different things that have to be done, and the one thing that went <laughs> wrong makes the other ten just completely worthless, and you just die. So yeah, it's yeah. A tough. It's a very tough matchup. I'm struggling with it, but yeah, getting things more sequ sequential and just just having like an intuition basically in my mind about like when things need to happen is helping right. is, is what that i really need you know what i mean and just so everyone knows that's why players like snow are so scary with their reaver control it's not so much that he's good at controlling the shuttle and reaver that that much is evident what's so good is that he's done it so many times that he knows what to do while he's microing the shuttle and reaver based on the game time mm -hmm. so ev all of his task switching is precise while he's doing it because he knows at this time i do this at this time I do this. he's doing that he's doing that behavior tree while he's doing that high level of control which is what's so impressive and that's the hardest thing about starcraft is staying in that like ebb and flow of the game while you're also mindlessly and obsessed about something completely different and keeping those two things existing like in parallel with each other is very difficult for a human brain to do especially a male human brain right We're very linear multitasking yeah you need to have muscle memory to make that work really i feel like that's what i'm sort yeah, that, of that developing wrong. here is like getting that yeah, muscle like, memory going it's that it's that quote of like bruce lee saying like i don't fear a man that like kicks a thousand times i fear the man that like kick practice kicks the same kick a thousand times right mm. and that's what you're doing you're like doing you're trying to practice the same thing over and over again and really hammer it out so uh, at this point i do this at this point i do this and it will will be a very painful process of not doing it right for a very long time yeah but eventually it will start to click the annoying thing about playing on ladder though is Terran, uh up until like high b rank they often are just cheesy as hell. They're doing like the weirdest, craziest shit that, no. uh, like I, I barely ever get a standard game where I get to practice that. And then when I finally do get a standard game, it's, uh, you know, it's completely unpracticed and 
I'm falling behind <laughs> constantly. Whereas sounds like, like you're very mm. like I say, it sounds like you're in a chrysalis and you're very slowly gonna become the Zergartosis. I'm just trying to play a standard <laughs> game cast. <laughs> well, I mean, just about every game is like a, a mech build or you know a, a vulture drop or a vulture run by or a double wraith play or an eight racks <laughs> or a bbs or there's just so many different things that can yeah. that can do and then the one time that it's one racks fe into two racks push it's like oh well um how do I do this again? I haven't played this game for so long. Now, can, can I give you some advice about this? Okay. Not all of your friends are... Some of your friends are actually enemies and some of your enemies are actually friends in the sense that when you do get that one game of like, oh, I get to finally just play against one Rex versus two Rex, in a way you should be unhappy about that. In a way you should be embracing all these asshole apes on the ladder that are throwing these cheeses your way because that is what's going to make you a better player mm. if you just practice against the same standard style over and over again that actually make you a worse player yeah sure you'll have a good standard game but anything else that throws your way you won't be able to cope with it and you'll just be derailed so use this as an opportunity of these apes to train you into finding the adjustments that you need to still play a, a very a solid game despite whatever's thrown at you embrace it more mm, I think I've um figured out a lot of those strategies yeah i think i've um gotten pretty good at adapting to that uh thanks to those c rank b rank terran players for throwing just about everything at the sun under the sun they're your me. real friends they're your friends because they're <laughs> helping you right think of it like that they're actually helping you they're not they're not they're not your enemy at all they're, they're the ones that you want to be facing because yeah that's gonna prevent you from like easy losses in the future right Right, but now I'm losing very easily to everyone that I need to beat to get into A rank. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's the, that's the story, right? Like, you know, you, you climb through one slime pit and then you're into a whole different, you're in a bigger pond with bigger fish now, you know, this is how it goes. And there's always going to be bigger fish. So, yeah. you, but, but you can still grow. You can still grow and eventually you'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there eventually. And you will, and that's that's kind of like StarCraft in general. You will have to focus on totally different aspects of your game as you progress. Like you know, for a few months, it'll be this one problem that you're having, and then the next month, it'll be something totally different. And you're like mad about something completely different. Yeah, I'll be back to being angry about Protoss again. Yeah. But recently, I've been doing a lot better against Protoss, but there's still some things that just yeah throw me. Throw me around the corner, man. It's crazy. What's your favorite matchup to play? Not the, not what's your best matchup, but like what would you enjoy playing the most? I think I like playing ZVP or ZVT the most. Um, probably ZVT, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. As long as I don't, I'm not dying like right in, in the early game, but. It's so stressful playing against Protoss, trying to dodge storms all the time. I mean, they're both stressful as hell. What am I saying? Like, right. They're both <laughs> crazy stressful. We're talking about Brood War here, but um, yeah, I don't know. I don't... It, I, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. I would say I would say TVZ is more stressful in the sense that things can go wrong a lot quicker because mm -hmm. like the time to kill is so low for both sides like it's like glass cannons against each other right yeah. in tvz like how long it takes for bio to gun down muters and what have you compared to like say how long it takes to for high just to kill zealots like it's a lot different right so the ebb and flow of the game does feel a lot different in that regard so i think zvt is the most volatile matchup in that regard because yeah. everything can go wrong so quickly for both sides and but zvp i would argue is more frustrating mm -hmm. because of factors like there's there's more things that can go wrong and there's there's more leeway for things to go wrong for the protoss you know what i mean like his units have so much higher hit hit points that 
a small mistake from him isn't as punishing. Whereas if, if, if a Terran player makes a small mistake and runs into your lurkers for a second, you kill the entire squad of bio. Yeah. If the zealots like run in for a second, they take a few shield hit point damage and they run out again. You know what I mean? It's like a different feel to the game completely. Yeah, it's true. Um, uh, it's just a frustrating aspect of building up a massive army and you have to use so many different control groups and then the Protoss is moving, mm. you know, 200, 200 on one, two, three, four. <laughs> yeah, four, and then four clicking four a few groups. buttons to storm all your units into oblivion. Yeah. And if you're dumb enough to just attack move your units and they, they all go through like a funnel and all get stormed to death. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's That can be very blood boiling when you've got such a <laughs> massive supply and you're trying to take a fight and uh, the Protoss throws down like six storms and covers the entire front line. Like, oh my yeah. god, you're trying to pull everything back out of it. But you just you can't <laughs> you can't pull everything back at the same time. You don't have enough hotkeys to even have everything hotkeyed. Yeah. You better pull out game, man. It's ridiculous. So <laughs> I don't know. Both of them are, are crazy frustrating and difficult, but it is what it is. It's it's um I think that's yeah. why StarCraft is such a satisfying game to play because it's mm. it's frustrating 99% of the time and then when you finally do start playing well and everything clicks and the ebb and flow kicks in and your build is crisp and everything's responding the way you want it to and you snipe the vessel just as it pops out the starport everything's just lining up perfectly then you get that huge like rush of dopamine that you don't get from anything else that, in terms of gaming anyway like uh, you could argue that there's like sportsmen in say boxing or like football or not that they get that same kind of like rush from being like that much in a flow state where everything's just like clicking yeah like i, I don't think anything compares to that in a digital sense in terms of gaming like there's no other game that could give you that feeling when you play that well yeah a lot of people like to compare brood war to chess but you never get that feeling out of chess no chess there's too much downtime there's too much like relaxing you're also too much heart. reliant on your opponent because like mm. you might be playing fast chess like where you're like both making moves every second then all of a sudden your opponent takes 10 seconds to think and your ebb and flow is completely crushed right whereas you get that heart pounding moment of everything going on at the same time uh the, yeah. the adrenaline is is next level yeah and also starcraft is more akin to something like poker than chess even though there are chess like elements it, it actually is it's a chaos um, simulator and if you're good at it then you can climb that ladder of chaos right, right. but the reality the reality is most people can't most people as soon as they get derailed and go into that void of chaos they just get sucked in by it right you know what i'm talking about like when things go wrong and like say he's hitting you just before your sunken's are ready or your lurker tech is done like we all just freak out like that's just a normal human response to that but when you get as good as hero is at the game when th everything goes wrong you're just still just calmly calculating the adjustments you need to make to to win the game mm -hmm. yeah Gotta get to that level, man. Something else. Someone else. Well, and that. Mm -hmm. Did you? Would you argue that someone like Flash is like the the Magnus Carlson of StarCraft? Like, what 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 do you think compares to Flash in terms of his like zero sum game echelon that he had reached? Yeah, I would say like a Magnus Carlson, or uh, some people want to compare him to. Uh, faker but i don't, I don't think that's an accurate comparison actually no. i don't think faker has a big enough gap of a, at, at one point maybe there was a point where faker was miles above everyone like for a period of about 18 months maybe he was just completely on different level but that was short-lived whereas flash has been on a different level for much longer than a couple of years yeah uh, the gap is still there um obviously not as pronounced anymore but right up until he quit or he uh went to the yeah. army it was it was still there so um yeah i wouldn't compare him to faker i don't know there's was, so few 
good examples you to can't, compare him. You can't compare him to someone in the gaming world because I would argue he's the best gamer of all time based on his achievements and like amount of money he's earned and not necessarily the amount of money, but like the the achievements in terms of like the placements, how many back to back titles he's got and what mm. have you. And and in a zero the the nature of StarCraft is one of the harshest zero sum environments we have. Like something like professional football is actually a really intense zero sum game, but there are far more opportunities to be successful in football. You know, there's there's more seats to be had. There's some maybe MMA stars that you could compare Flash to. Um Who would you compare him to? Oh Khabib? Khabib maybe, yeah. I, I, I could see Khabib being a good comparison. Just like the the work ethic and like yeah. the, the very like stoic personality. And yeah, I would see that. The way that he's just able to dominate everybody um, with like a different yeah, style, Khabib, you know. Khabib was undefeated, right? He was like, what was it, 28? I can't remember the exact record, but it was like 28 and 0. And then his dad died and he retired. Hmm something like that something like that but just incredible incredible fighter and um yeah nobody really comparable to him the, the best is when you trash talk him in the the press conference and then while he's smashing you on the ground he's, he's saying let's talk now let's talk now <laughs> <laughs> now we talk <laughs> I love that man. Yeah. Yeah, he's got some of the best trash talk of all time. He trash talks you while he's beating you up. That's the best <laughs> thing about it. Yeah. I want to change his face. That's one of the best ones. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Brutal guy. I think he wrestled with like bears when he was a kid or something. Like granted like black bears that weren't trying to maul his face off, but yeah crazy well i mean i'm i'm hoping for that asl run i'm going to be watching carefully well it's now called ssl soup what do you think about the new name <laughs> soup um i don't i don't mind as long as we get a delicious primordial soup of very nutritional amino acids in the form of uh flashes innovations i'd be more than happy if that's in the equation yeah, this is going to be a strange first event for Soup. I mean, yeah. what are they are they actually going to fully like re rename it and um, you know, change it to SSL season 1 or what are they going to do? I'm really curious. Honestly, don't know. We'll have to wait and see. I haven't been able to find any websites from from Soup or anything. Strange. Yeah, I'm. I'm curious how the the StarCraft landscape will develop over the next coming years because we've had a lot of life breathed into it, and with Flash coming back, that's going to both draw in a lot of attention and like sh switch things up a little bit. Just by him being in the scene, will definitely have a rippling effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll bring a lot more people out to watch these these tournaments. It's exciting, man. A golden era of Starcraft, man. Yeah. Another golden era. I I'm all about it. I haven't seen any like other RTS that's really catching my attention recently. Did you see the we won't. battle? Whatever. What the hell is that Which called? Which one? Um, What's the developer? I think it's owned by Tencent. interested if it's ten cent. <laughs> <laughs> Same man. There's a bunch of news that I was watching about ten cent uh and their uh League of Legends client and how it's like tracking everything that's going on in your computer and kind of like backdooring your computer. I don't know if it was fully accurate, but this is something that uh the companies in china are compelled to do and they're not allowed to talk about it either uh, if the chinese government tells them they need to do something they have to do it and they can't talk about it so the fact that they deny yeah. it is 
not really compelling <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> I, um yeah as far as like new rts's are concerned though saying i don't know man like you're not gonna see anything like starcraft be successful anytime soon and, and developers won't make games like starcraft there's not a big enough market for it you mm -hmm. the only rts games you'll see are people's like new attempts at like hybridizing the rts genre with other elements like trying to make it feel more like a moba than like a, a strategy game for example like they're going to try and like dumb down their like base building elements and early game elements and stuff and focus more on like the actual fighting or the actual like gameplay of how the units interact on the, the screen and what have you like it'll be it'll feel more like a mobile game version of an rts than an actual rts if you know what i'm saying that's a great way to describe this new RTS that I was looking at. Um, yeah, both Tasteless and Artosis were making videos on it. But it's basically with, you don't really have an economy. Like you just have like a, a deck of units that you choose before the game starts. And then yeah, it's a game mobile game, if that's the case. You just kind of spawn the units as units spawn instantly. And then you control and you can expand. But the unit, the the workers spawn automatically and then your in your your income increases do you know what i'm talking about it's there's no buildings aside from that i haven't seen it but it's so funny that i assume that that's the kind of thing that they would would, would make and that's exactly what they do <laughs> it really does sound like a mobile game when you talk about it but i mean if you look at if you look at the market it makes sense that's why these developers think it's a good idea i can't really fault it they, at the end of the day they want to make money it's a business so it makes mm -hmm. sense to do that right yeah. i get it but uh, we will only see good rts games when um ai becomes more accessible and you can use ai to help you develop games um uh, a lot more effectively and if you've got access to engines where the ai can help you make games with the engine people that aren't so good at making games in small teams won't have that problem anymore so you as an independent developer that wants to make an rts game and because you haven't got a big team it doesn't matter that they won't be super successful and get like hundreds of thousands of players because you don't need to have a super successful game anymore you just got like a small team that's being helped by an ai and you can then you will see games like what we maybe want to see and like a bit more you know retro style kind of rts just raw rts games you'll see that a lot more mm. once uh, indie developers don't have to worry about that anymore and can have uh, more accessibility to generating those games in the first place without needing any kind of big team or too much financial support that'd be interesting yeah we'll see how that goes i mean the indie game scene has already developed so much it's evolved so much yeah really impressive i think that will only continue that will only continue because uh, i don't know if you know but like ai is getting so good now where you can have like you can just get an ai to plug you like a fully high definition like cgi scene like a cut scene like mm -hmm. out of thin air you know what i mean like we're, we're very close to being being able to like make triple a titles with very small developer teams right yeah that's that's gonna be next level that's gonna be crazy and then the AAA studios will have access to go even crazier and do like 4A titles, you know what I mean? Quad A mm. titles, or whatever mm. you want to call them. Like, you'll see that. And there'll be a lot more competitiveness in the market because of the accessibility of AI. There'll be more competition now. So you'll probably see a lot more innovation as a result and people won't be just following the same model. That's like a problem is, is that game developers are looking at the current market and being like okay what do we need to have a really successful game and they're looking at it like this they're looking at it like oh we need a live service game so mm. then, then they build their game around that model alone so then you're never going to get like really good single player games or what have you there'll be all the games are getting funneled into a very like tight um framework of what has been successful like fortnite and what have you they're, they're modeling their games around very niche successful things and eventually they'll realize that that is not the way forward and with the uh, advent of ai coming into full swing I'll, i think you'll see a really huge shift in the gaming market because it will become a lot more competitive with the indie developers able to shine through a lot more i agree i i think that the death of these large game developer companies is a foregone conclusion at this point like ea and shit because yeah. we'll be able to make indie developers will be able to make games that are way better way more inspirational like way 
way more inspired is what I meant to say. Yeah. Than, than these like random or uh, formulaic games that they're turning out every year. Um, people are going to catch on more and more to indie games and it's going to become better and better. Yeah, I think I think it's inevitable that these these will end up shutting down and that indie games like will for the most part take over to be small development studios everywhere. I think that's better for the industry as a whole anyway. I think so. I think it's better for the industry. I think it's better for the consumer. I think it's better all around. The only, the only people it's not better for are like the people that are profiteering right now. And they're not going to be too happy because they're not going to be making as much money as easily anymore. But that's a good thing for the industry as a whole. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be better. That'll be that, that's exciting. I'm excited for the future, Shun. Me too. There's a lot of naysayers saying a lot of people it's easy to be negative, it's easy to mm -hmm. be deconstructive and destructive and what have you, but even destruction can be done creatively. I don't know if you've ever seen someone like destroy a mountain with like thousands of very precisely placed explosives. You know what I mean? Like destruction can be very creative as well. So if you're gonna tear something down, at least do it creatively, guys. Gonna break a few eggs, maybe. Make an omelet out of it, though. Yeah. <laughs> Make so just break the eggs, guys. Make an omelet out of it. Make something sweet. Well, Shun, I've got to get going, man. This has been fun. I'm really excited about fun. Flash. I think that uh, a lot of uh, people who have never listened to the podcast before are probably listening right now because we put Flash in the title. That's Maybe. awesome. Thanks for hanging <laughs> out, guys. Um, Check out KCM if you haven't seen it before. Check out um, all the other casts that we're doing and link to Shun's channel in the description. Link to my channel in his description box as well, yep. I hope. And uh, <laughs> we'll see you guys in the next episode. We're doing this uh, once every week or once every two weeks, whenever we get the time. So stay tuned for that next episode. We'll see you guys there. Thanks, guys.